2023 has been brought in with celebrations in cities around the world. Ticker tape showered down in New York's Times Square, while the Berlin night sky was illuminated by a spectacular firework display. In Madrid, it was to the Puerta del Sol Square that revelers went to eat 12 grapes, the traditional Spanish way of seeing in the new year. While in London, there was a spectacular display over the River Thames. For many cities, it was the first time since the outbreak of the COVID pandemic that celebrations were not constrained by health restrictions. A sign of hope for participants that the new year will herald brighter things to come. Just half an hour into 2023, air raid sirens ring across Ukraine's capital, followed by the sound of explosions. Despite the attacks, Kyiv residents shouted New Year's greetings from their balconies. In Russia, Vladimir Putin delivered a New Year's address flanked by people in military uniform. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky accused Putin of hiding behind his troops instead of leading them. I want to wish all of us one thing, victory, he said, and that's the main thing. Let this year be the year of return, the return of our people. On New Year's Eve, one person died and dozens were injured in missile strikes across the country. Zelensky said Ukrainians would not forgive Russia. Croatia has officially adopted the euro as its currency, becoming the 20th European Union member state to do so. The Balkan nation joined the EU a decade ago, but had to wait until now to qualify as a eurozone country. After the clock struck midnight, Finance Minister Marko Primorac and National Bank Governor Boris Vucic pulled out the first euro notes from a Croatian cash machine. Meanwhile, the last driver to have their passport checked on the Croatia-Slovenia border was handed a congratulatory teddy bear. Croatia has now also entered the Schengen zone, permitting open transport between participating countries, and that means frontier identity checks are now a thing of the past. Queues are already forming. Some have even been camping out. For days now, people have been pouring into Brazil's capital to see Luiz and Saro Lula da Silva inaugurated as president for a third term. This man cycled more than 1,300 kilometers. It's celebrating victory, he says. Not only Lula's, but the victory of the Brazilian people, who are already saturated with the inhumane neglect and a negative attitude of a government unprepared for humanistic and environmental correction. Lula presented his government this week. His new administration has promised to crack down on illegal deforestation. The ceremony later will be snubbed by outgoing leader Jair Bolsonaro. He appeared emotional in a farewell message to supporters on Friday and has left for the U.S. North Korea marked the start of the new year with several weapons tests. The latest, after a year that saw an unprecedented number of them by Pyongyang, as it presses ahead on its weapons development, while experts speculate it could be on the verge of a fresh nuclear test. On Saturday, state media broadcast a handover ceremony of multiple rocket launchers that included leader Kim Jong-un, hardware he said could strike anywhere in South Korea. The North state media quoted Kim saying his country needed to secure overwhelming military power and to develop another intercontinental ballistic missile system whose main mission is quick nuclear counter-strike.
Kim accused Washington and Seoul of trying to isolate and stifle Pyongyang with U.S. nuclear strike assets constantly deployed in South Korea, calling it unprecedented in human history. Ties between the Koreas have long been tense, but have grown even worse since the South's president, Yoon Suk-yeol, took office. Sunday's events come after a week of ratcheted up tensions with the South. A recent incursion of five North Korean drones has reignited debate about the South's air defences. And officials say Yoon ordered the military to send its own drones into the North in response, quote, even if that means escalation.